Okay, week six was bananas. Welcome to Up and Taylor Lewan. That's the show for this Monday. We are back in LA. No more undefeated, they all fell, which makes it more interesting. The Jets make history. Sorry, Marissa. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is an alien. Major upsets galore, and the Bengals back to 500 just in time for some rest. Let's do it, guys. was an absolute stunning day in the NFL. I got back on Saturday and I'm watching this yesterday and I'm just like, am I like Looney Tunes? Am I loopy doopy over here? Like not understanding what's going on. So many injuries, so many disruptive upsets and it was capped by the biggest upset of this entire season last night with the Bills holding on to beat the Giants 14-9. We Billy Wobbly score in Orchard Park. But of course, as it never is, it was not without controversy. Thanks to all our subscribers, everybody watching on YouTube Live. We love you. Uh, Taylor Lewan is on the show. Give me some of your questions. We need to know. But it looked like Darren Waller, as you're looking at here, he was uh, interfered with in the end zone on New York's final play from the one yard line. Zero's on the clock. I'm going to ask Taylor Lewan about this. Don't worry. We'll get his thoughts here in a moment. We'll get his thoughts on some of the brouhaha's around the league as well. But either way, I mean, come on. What are we doing here? Either way, well, to get his thoughts, Bills escaped with the win, and Bills fans understandably on edge after a second straight lackluster performance, if you will, and getting shut out in the first half. Oof. Um, I think there was a significant development out of this for Ken Dorsey and this offense because after following their usual MO of completely abandoning the run of the first half, which like makes me want to pull my extensions out of my head, they committed to it after halftime and saw results. Bravo, cheerio, let's go. Buffalo ran the ball 20 times in the second half alone, and it led to this offense completely controlling the ball during the comeback. They only had three drives after halftime, but they ran 29 plays between their two touchdown drives, and they controlled the clock for almost 17 minutes on those two possessions alone. Mwah! We love it. Throwing flowers your way, uh, Ken Dorsey. This team's better when it's balanced. We've been saying that pretty much every uh, year of old Josh Allen's career. Let's hopefully build on this. They probably won't because every team abandons the run in some frustrating way as a fan. Um, but maybe this will serve as a little reminder, okay? And then on the Giants side, there were some major coaching errors in this one, and I'm sure it hurts to be one freaking yard away and come up short. But this was also a reminder of the power of none other than Saquon Barkley, okay? It, it wasn't just his 98 total yards that kept the 15-point underdogs in this game. Collinsworth said it best on the broadcast. He completely changes the way you have to defend this offense. He is the heart. He's the soul, the center, the focal point, the, the nucleus of this team, and they need to find a way to keep him in New York, because if you don't, you're screwed. Giants, you just are, uh, at least for now, in this what would be a window, paying your quarterback what you paid him, uh, him not even being out there. Yeah, Daniel Jones slated to be on the show tomorrow. Debo, he's hurt. He's fighting everybody in Cleveland. He's on the show tomorrow, too. we got Taylor Lewan coming up. Let's move on to what happened, guys, in Cleveland. Uh, by the way, the weather in Cleveland, just the, just the most London-y weather of all time in every game so far this year. Uh, it began with a heated pregame boo-ha-ha, Trent Williams, you don't want to fight that guy. Man, he's in the middle of everything. And it ended with Niners rookie Jake Moody, which is what the weather was in Cleveland. Moody. Uh, he whiffed on a 41-yard field goal that would have won it all. The Browns, they pull off like a head-scratching, stunning 1917 win with P.J. Walker and the, and the Niners franchise record winning streak at 15. I'll get into the Niners injuries and that side of thing, but we've got to talk about the Browns defense and what they did fueling this team. Uh, they hold, hold Mr. Brock Purdy, who just didn't look himself, look uncomfortable, he was off. Just go to, you know, Stats Guerrero, he was a little, had a field day dragging him on every play and every, like, everything he had all day long. Just go to hit. I mean, these, these Niners pundits and fans, I just can't. Um, but he only had 125 yards. He did not look great. Uh, and he came up with the first interception that we've seen him throw all season. The pass rush with this Brown squad, and we've been saying it, number one defense, like they were in the backfield all game long. And this is nothing new. The Browns are allowing 121.4 yards per game through the air. Oh my gosh, that is nothing. They are by far the league's best pass defense. And they're allowing the opposition to convert 23.1% of their third downs. Are you kidding? Less than a fourth of the third downs are happening. Jim Schwartz's squad made its case for the NFL's best defense yesterday afternoon. I'm, an, I'm not one to argue. I'm arguing with Miles and company. I'm not doing it. Niner side. 
I mean, they, they wish their pass rush was good. I'm just saying they got one of the better ones too. Like, it was um, like one of those where you're like sitting in your bedroom and you're like, oh, oh. it's disconcerting. Can I get some air? Can I get some water? It was a, a number of fronts discombobulating, okay? Mentally, if you're an Niners fan. First and foremost, the injuries. You don't want to see it. We talk about it a lot. Christian McCaffrey, he leaves with an oblique injury. Then he comes back, and then he exits again, and then he's rolled out. Then Debo, our guy Debo, he leaves after the brouhaha in the beginning with Trent Williams. He's out of there with his shoulder, and he did not return. I hated seeing that. So we'll talk to him tomorrow about that. But we're still waiting on the severity of both of those going forward. But even with Ayuk, even with Kit, like it's a, it's a, it's not good. It's a, it's the only thing that could possibly hold them back, other than this pass rush and pass defense on the Cleveland side. The other thing you got to be worried about is the performance of your rookie kicker. Yeah, Jake Moody. He was the third rounder. That's a that's a high pick, okay? And his two misses, including the potential game winner, those were devastating blows. And of course, it's going to be open season on Brock Purdy again after his worst performance of his young career. I do want to dig into this for a second, though, because I think you learn a lot about a quarterback and how he handles his worst moments. And I really liked what I learned about Purdy yesterday. And you should, too. Let me explain. Even with the struggles to handle the Browns' pressure or to get anything going offensively once you lose CMC, once you lose, you lose Debo and things aren't super easy or pretty out there. Um, I mean, gripping the wet ball, that was a shot that I could, you know, I could care to forget that sucked to see if you're a Niners fan or somebody who supports Brock Purdy in the face of everybody saying that it's a system, it's a game manager, he's out there, good, blah, blah, blah. He pushed all of it aside and he stepped up when the game was on the line. Final drive, let's go there. Purdy drove the Niners right down the field on this dominant Browns number one defense, picking up more first downs through the air than he had in the first 12 drives combined, guys. Combined. And he got them in position to win the damn game. And that drive is what everyone's talking about this morning. If the kicker does his job, if Moody does his thing, it's that drive. Oh, he's a finisher. He's a gamer, a game winner, or whatever. Like, whoo, 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 Brock Purdy. Again, it was a bad game. I'm not suggesting otherwise. I'm not defending him. But I think the resilience that we saw in that last drive is what's going to give him a shot to be successful in this league long term. And I'm not going to let one bad performance against a great defense in crap weather without a bunch of his key pieces change my mind about Brock Purdy. I'm sticking with him. And I'm looking forward to seeing how they bounce back, because that's what it's going to take. A quick bounce back. You can be down. How quick do you get back up off the mat? And they've got one, I believe, oh, and they've got a little time to rest, right? They have a Monday nighter in Minnesota. I love that extra day for Debo and CMC. Um, and the Niners caught something of a break, guys, um, after what happened in East Rutherford, by the way. Banged up Jet Squad without multiple starting O-linemen and like three of their corners, they were all out. They shocked the Eagles. They pull off a 20 to 14 comeback win. And who else would make the biggest play of the Jets season than Tony Adams? We call we, we Marissa, we called it. We were there. The Jets safety who was shining and sterling and like turning everybody's head at camp when we were in East Rutherford. Um, he picked up Jalen Hurts under two minutes to go, running it all the way back inside the 10. This had a Brees Hall's game-winning score, the Jets' third interception of the day, and that's about as clutch as it gets. So if you've watched the show, when we went there, he was all anyone was talking about. And here's a little reminder for those of you who didn't see it. Uh, who deserves a special shout-out today? You can throw a name. You know what? You can throw one out there for Tony Adams. He's doing a hell of a job. Tony Adams? Uh, Tony Adams. Okay, I'll give you him. Oh, my there gosh! <laughs> <laughs> We're two for two on Tony Adams. T.A., man, he's the real deal to me. Like, he's a guy who or was undrafted last year, a guy who uh, played some in, like, Pittsburgh game and uh, Seattle game, I believe so. So he got small experience, but a guy similar to the guys on the defense, and which makes this defense so exciting. They all were saying it. Then Aaron Rodgers came out, and he, he had, like, picked him off in a two-minute drill the day we were there, and I had to talk to Aaron about it, and he gave me one of those Aaron looks, like, don't ask me about the second year in draft in DB that everyone's talking about because he flipped me off. So the Jets, because of him, because of that moment, I mean, amazing. Incredible. Historic, by the way. They've never beaten the Eagles, and they finally did. They're now 3-3. Three and three. They're at 500. That's important. They've beaten the Bills. They've beaten the Eagles. Don't forget, they took the Chiefs to the wire as well. And as I said in week one, I'm not expecting Salah's team to fade quietly into the night. He's saying that we're embarrassed in quarterbacks. He's out there. Aaron Rodgers, by the way, an absolute alien. I'd like, you know, like, I I literally have had this zit in the middle of my forehead since, since like, September 12th. I'm not even kidding. I think I was in New York, and it was after that Jets bill. You went down six weeks ago, and I had this, like, stress zit in the middle of it. It still hasn't faded or gone away yet. You're out there, like, without crutches? 
Something does not add up. The math ain't mathing. Like, it's unbelievable what an absolute monster hyperbaric chamber he must be sleeping in that was delivered to his house that TMZ caught like a month ago. It must be working wonders because it's unbelievable what he's able to do out there. He's going to come back full faith. Absolutely, 100% sure these are going to come back if they can stay competitive, and they are, and they just took down the Eagles. They're a half game out of the playoff picture going into their bye and a date with the other New York team on the schedule. After that, things aren't going swimmingly for Daniel Jones and company, so we'll get to that in a moment. I do want to touch on the Eagles here. Marissa, I love you. We've got to talk about it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried. Uh, I don't love how Jalen got loose with the ball at times. He took full mea culpa, responsibility, accountability. It does concern me that their OC, Brian Johnson, seemed to abandon the run too early. I hate abandoning the run. I'm not panicking if I'm a Marissa McBride. Eagles fan, or no? It was a golden opportunity to stand alone as the last undefeated team in the NFL, but unless this bleeds into next week, I don't think it tells us where this Eagles team stands overall. Like, maybe Travis Kelsey, get off the sideline. Like, get, like you know, <laughs> did you like seeing him on the sideline, Marissa? Yeah, I was happy. You did? Brotherly love, why Brotherly not? Brotherly love, yeah. I don't think it's a distraction. Do the other brothers get to go on the sideline and root on their teammates? I don't think so. And, like, brothers and family? Well, they're not Travis Kelsey. And that's true. Right? Travis Kelsey does whatever the heck he wants. <laughs> um, okay, take a look at this full screen. This is what I want to show you guys. It's not like Hurts is the only one who's had a rough day against the Jets, Jets defense, okay? They were top five last year. You know that what they were going to be going into this season. They've made Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, he's pretty good, and Hurts look really frantic at times. And we've seen the other two bounce back perfectly. Okay, so I expect the same out of focused Jalen Hurts. All right, coming up after this, we're going to focus. I want to know about these fights. Has Taylor Lewan ever had to, like, get in on, like, a Trent williams vibe out there? I remember you and Josh Norman on the sideline. We're going to get we're gonna get into that. You're going to think we should be talking about that this this morning, we're going to talk to Taylor Lewan. Bust with the boys next. All right, Tay. Hey. I knew that's the sober credit. We need that. I didn't see that. Oh, I can't wait to see it. It's fire. I can't see because these are program. Do you guys see these? The bottom one. The bottom, the two, the two under the new, um, the two monitors under the new cameras are program. No, our feed, not program. They're, yes, I'm looking at a sleep number commercial with Justin Jefferson. Okay, okay, okay. We got a talk. Okay. A little bit of a headache. I was awake from like midnight till now. I'm just on, on I'm still on time. Oh, you're jet lagged? Mm hmm. That jet lag's tough. That's a lot of hours. It's not, a, it's not. On, on Wednesday, I still didn't feel good there. Really? Mm hmm. No, because it's just like, it's too many hours. It's, what is it, eight hours? No, longer. It was a Ten? six hour difference from here. No. Isn't it, isn't it four hours? Wait. No, there's a four hour, I think it's four from like, from New York. Yeah. No, no, no. It's eight, eight hours. hours. Eight, four and four, eight right? is like night, oh, which is okay. night and day. You scared me six. <laughs> it's night. talking about the flight or the, the, the time difference? Time difference. I don't know what we're talking about anymore. What hat are you wearing? Uh, Bucks hat. Okay, so now it's Bucks season. We're yeah, moving Dave on. Yeah, Damon Giannis played last night for the first time. Yeah. They look good. They do they? Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. You know how much I love. Giannis is like. I love your teams. Finally not going to be double teamed. Is that true? We'll yeah, because they're going to be all over Dame. I don't have room yeah. at the end. Uh, no room. But I did notice that uh, the Braves were knocked out. Yeah. Right. How much? How much shit did I get for saying that the Braves weren't going to win and get past your Phillies? I don't know, man. And that one guy that. that hit the Grand Slam is having a baby. They're all having a baby. All There's having a baby? literally four players in the Phillies that are all that their wives are expecting. Yeah. Didn't McVay's wife go into labor yet? Wasn't that was a whole storyline that like know. he was going to miss the game? She hasn't. Oh. Yeah. Everybody, they got that glow. Too. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> what the guy? Yeah, yeah they, they got, got that glow. glow. No, but I, he was like, I I, he was like I'm going to miss the game mm -hmm. if she goes to labor. I don't think I've ever heard a coach say that before. Wow. Good for him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. No, thank you. <clears throat> Speaking of having babies, Spooktober. Spooktober. <laughs> <laughs> I kid. I kid. I kid. I kid. Any day now. That is how babies work. Yes. Any day now. Good job, Sean. Okay. 
Adele, Katy Perry, Usher, they have residencies in Las Vegas. Joining us now is a guy whose residency on Up and Adams, the mayor of Spooktober, Pro Bowl left tackle for the Tennessee Titans. I need that shirt. You got it, Kay. We got you. I'll get you one, no problem, brother. Listen, Spooktober, 16 days in. Let's all let's, let's embrace the spook and have a great holiday season, folks. How can we embrace the spook? What are we watching? these days uh this week i mean friday we hit friday the 13th because it was friday the 13th i just you know it doesn't have to be scary okay put on some halloween town put on a little little something get your niece pop on a disney original you're gonna have a great time with it it's just about knowing that we're in the holiday season it's a beautiful time of year my seven-year-old niece watched casper for the first time and just fell in love with devin sawa which i understand her taste is wonderful and then she was crying her eyes out at the end because he like gets released and is not a ghost anymore and it was really traumatizing for her so the nice movie He's also terrifying. So we're going to stick to Hocus Pocus here at the Mm -hmm. Adams household on my side of things. I'm going to take you to something that I thought was kind of spooky. This play at the end of the 14-9 Bills win over the Giants. Controversial. Johnson Crabs, Darren Darren Waller's jersey. What say you? A lot of people are also saying that Darren Waller did a big push off. Here's what I love about this situation. (laughs) The refs staying out of the way. I know I used the word attention whore last time we had it, we talked about the yeah, refs. This time they did, a, they did a phenomenal job of jumping out and just letting the boys play ball. That end of the game situation is when you let the boys get after it. There was a bunch of bunch of calls. I know the touchdown with the Eagles, first touchdown of the day, that was kind of a, a situation where people were like, did they score? Did they not score with this one? I love that they let it go. I love that they let, let it ride. Shout out to the Giants though playing a hell of a game against a team that everyone thought they were going to dust at like 14-point favorites. You're having a great hair day. <laughs> okay. For you to say something like that on a Monday like this, I'm, that's special. I'm serious. I mean, do you agree, Marissa? Absolutely. You're having like, this is the best. You're, this, you're, you have a 10 out of 10. Go on. I'll tell you, I, this is beautiful. I don't know how to take this compliment, <laughs> but I'm just, we're going to keep rolling. <laughs> Let's do it. But we're not done with the Bill side of things. So you like th- that they didn't, that you're saying they didn't miss one there, those refs, which is fine. This is the second game in a row, though, and they were in London. The jet lag, I do think, is a real thing. But this offense with mm-hmm. the Bills, I, I need to see a little more, I feel like. The, you know, this is the same yeah. team that beat Miami, but this offense seems mm-hmm. to be struggling with their identity a little bit. Is this as easy as finding a more balanced attack like I was bitching about in the first part of the show, or is there a bigger (coughs) issue going on in Buffalo? No, I don't don't think so. Anytime you have Josh Allen, you don't have to get too concerned about anything. Yeah, a more balanced attack is always going to play into your favor more. You run the ball more. It sets up your play action. You know, it's and they have a great offensive line, too. They they had guys that were getting after a nice little uh, guys fighting Kayvon Thibodeau's doing leg kicks as if he's an eight year old (laughs) uh, and his brother's fighting him. And then a shout out Josh Allen too, jumping in the end zone. I think that guy, what you see on that team is camaraderie and chemistry is not an issue on the Buffalo Bills. Maybe it's a play calling thing. Maybe the OC needs to take a look in the mirror and say, hey, let's just have a little more consistency. If it's working, do it. If it's not, let's try to set something else going on down the road. And so it's one big game of chess when you play ball. One big game. You, you do a play in the beginning of the game to set up that fourth quarter, set up that third quarter. So I think, you know, you run the ball a little bit more. You get the offensive line feeling a little more comfortable, get fitting in blocks, seeing how their hands feel, and then, boom, it helps protection as well, and then you can take shots down the field. It's really well said by you. I'm looking at scary movies since it's Spooktober, A Quiet Mm -hmm. Place. Those aliens are horrifying. You could even go like Predator, Alien. There's a bunch of creepy alien movies. Um, When is the one of Aaron Rodgers getting released? The Mars one of a- getting released? Like, when is the, the the alien movie featuring Aaron Rodgers? Signs was a creepy one. Remember Joaquin Phoenix? Dude, but, like, this man is not wa- human. It's incredible. And I love how you pivoted that into a Spooktober reference. Here's Got what you? I'll say about Aaron Rodgers. He is truly proving that Western medicine is lacking in so many ways because you know my man's doing his holistic ayahuasca trips what does down that in mean Costa what does Rica. that mean what is what goes into that what do you know Post, oh, like okay so i might get exposed here but a holistic to me is natural remedies to fix ailments in the body in ways that the body can become better not just put a band-aid over right you know certain things like uh 
anti-inflammatory pills, your uh, diclofenac, your your uh, Toradol, those types of things. Right. Those would not be the holistic side. That's a Western medicine thing. Taking turmeric, cayenne, um, you know, health or like well, you can go to a little juice bar and get a, get a health and wellness shot. Those are the things that are going to be more down the holistic line. I think Aaron Rodgers. You think he, you think cayenne pepper and turmeric or what's keep it with what's got Aaron Rodgers feeling the way he's feeling? Out oh, there? I bet you, I bet you it's helping. I bet you he's out there taking that turmeric every single day with the inflammation. I think. Here's where Aaron Rodgers, this is where he is above above the rest, is he takes the time to educate himself in mm. matters that are important to him. And he not is he's not just going to a doctor and saying, fix my ankle and I'm gonna do exactly what everyone says. He's he's exhausting every avenue. It seems like to me, I don't have a direct line with this man, but it seems to me that he's exhausting every single avenue to make sure that he's doing not only the best thing for him now, but from a longevity reason as he gets into his 50s and 60s. Hell, the man might play football forever. Who knows? But it is, it's truly incredible to see this man 34 days out of surgery, throwing a football, walking around. You can tell he's got a little bit of a limp. Yeah. But the fact that he's moving around the way he is, if it works out and he comes back and he doesn't get re-injured and, the, you know, there's a lot of dominoes that have to fall in place. But if those things do work out the way I feel like they are going to with a guy like Aaron, we need to start reevaluating our medicine and how we do things from a surgical standpoint and a rehab standpoint across all of sports. And you know what I th- I'm fascinated by? He's got these cameras following him, and I know that he's doing some sort of doc vibe something. It's about what's mm-hmm. up here. Because I think everybody, if you're a professional athlete, I think the, 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 the really elite ones all sort of take care of their body in that way. And like Tom Brady had that footprint and all of that. But it's, there's got to be, I'm convinced it's up here for him. I'm convinced that whatever he, it's mm-hmm. all, there's a mental part of this that is bigger than the turmeric part of this. That's what I really think. We think holistic. I really think he's willing himself and focusing on this day in, day out, minute by minute. And mm-hmm. I can't wait to see hear, and hear that story told eventually. <clears throat> and I, I love the way you said that because it really is, it does seem up top. One of the, my favorite things about Aaron Rodgers is he understands who he is as a person and mm-hmm. he's not afraid to keep, have the opinions that he does and stand by him with back science or education or what he reads into. The man is not afraid to be controversial. He's not afraid to live the way he wants to live. And, you know, so so many times in football, football is, is such an amazing sport and the pros – outweigh the cons in so many ways. And I think that one thing, a con of football is you're taught to act and do certain things in a way that like your position group does offensive line. You're seen, not heard wide receivers, DBs, you're loud and overconfident. And like, there's these stereotypical ways that people are taught to act. And Aaron Rodgers has the confidence, has the understanding in himself to, to be who he is and allow his success to be shown as well. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about, about that man. What is the best alien scary movie for Spooktober? Oh, God. I think you, you, I think you nailed it. What? Alien. The Faculty. There was Remember a, The Faculty? A Quiet Place. I don't think I've even seen The Faculty. Oh, but there, there's a study that came out. There's a study that came out about like uh, BPM, uh, beats per minute. And like how they did like a, a, a small study on like movies and how your heart was elevated. And I think a quiet place too, was like number four so on the good. list of most scary movies of all time. So I've that probably that. would have to be it. I'm going to go ET when ET goes all white, nothing is scarier haunts me to my you dreams. Think, oh, Can't eat. You think species. so? Absolutely. Absolutely terrifying. Just a bike in the air. Horrifying. Okay. So this jets defense is horrifying. Yeah. They're a nightmare. Um, are they good enough? Is this team good enough to let them get to a place where they can contend without Aaron Rodgers? Hold on the <laughs> fort to get him back, let's say, December. I think the simple answer is yes. I mean, when Aaron Rodgers went down on Sunday night, was it Sunday night football against the Bills? Monday night. They win, sorry, Monday night. They win that game, and then they just – you know, beat the last the last team that was undefeated in the NFL, the Eagles. I mean, you take two contending teams and you win with Zach Wilson and the defense proving that they are just truly elite. It's like one of those deals where like they could absolutely win. They're going to have to have gritty wins. They're going to have to fight it out, duke it out every single week in hopes that, you know, Aaron can come back and be healthy, which would be the biggest storyline maybe behind tra- Travis and Taylor Swift. The biggest storyline <laughs> in the NFL season I think they absolutely can make the playoffs. They 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 can they really can do it. It's it's uh it's gonna be so cool if they do too. I'm actually rooting for it. 
It would be a wild story, one that, I mean, I, I promise this man is manifesting. This Aaron Rodgers is doing his thing. It's wild mm. to think about. Okay, I want to ask you why this fight happened between the Browns and the Niners. We can dig into a lot of things. It's before the game. It's Debo. It's Trent. You don't want to mess with either. What's what, Why do you think this happened? I don't know. It looks like, so I, I didn't, I've seen this video. And it looks like Cleveland's on the other side, and they probably had this chip on the shoulder back against the world. No one believes we're gonna they're, we're gonna beat the 49ers. We have to do something. And then uh, who was the guy doing? Was it the finger thing, or was it the wrist? Was he doing the this Flex thing right thing? here? Yeah, I don't no. know. Yeah, but yeah. I you just jumping in there, and then Debo. Here's what I love, <laughs> and some people hate this. I absolutely love this. Trent Williams. He's a dog, dude. He's a dog, and you can see. All these yapping chihuahuas know, getting I after it. it, not saying Debo, these DBs. And then Trent William comes in just like legit bullying cats. And everyone's like, all right, yeah, yeah, you're right. We probably overreacted. We probably could back up from that. That's uh, that's on us. That's on us, Trent. And so it is it is awesome. But shout out to Cleveland Browns. You get the last laugh in that situation in a way that, you know, was beautiful. Defensive, defensive game. Brock Purdy looked not great at all until the last drive, but – they're the the 49ers are gonna be fine they're, they're still contenders they're still the best team in the nfl in my opinion but shout out the browns dude just doing things that browns just don't do what do you what does that mean what do i make of this brown squad obviously they have hands down the best pass defense mm -hmm. in the league how did they do this i know that there's injuries i know christian i know the weather right. sucked but like what do i make of this brown squad what did they do old school Old school football, dude. They're like their 90s. They're, they're defense. They're all three phases. They're going to have their offense take care of the football. Their defense with Jim Schwartz. They're going to do an amazing job of that. With DJ Jimmy, Walker, Taylor. Yeah, w Walker was awesome. But Deshaun Watson, he's, you know, he's got a shoulder or something like that. And they're saying it might be a little bit longer. They can win. They can win with Walker. Now, Joe Thomas had a very interesting stat after the week one of uh, the NFL season. Every single year, Hall of Fame football player, every single year he never won a home opener or a, not a home opener, a week one win. And the Browns did that. They're slowly changing with Miles Garrett and that defense. They're slowly changing the culture, the losing culture of the Cleveland Browns. And it's really one of those deals where like, you're fired up about it. You're fired up about the Browns being good. You're fired up about the Lions being better. You know, the, so the Bears, they're they're awful and that's that's terrible. But it's just, it's cool to see like a changing of the guard happening throughout historically bad franchises. I, I feel terrible saying historically bad, but in the last 10, 15, 20 years, right. which is historically bad franchises. Yeah. When I'm looking at this Niner side, there's the injuries, everything I mentioned, the sloppiness. They're going up against a formidable defense, but they should not have lost this game. And they looked no. off and Brock looked off the entire time. What do I? What do you make of that? Like, what is your takeaway? <clears throat> and then, like, were they feeling themselves? I mean, that, that fight couldn't have helped in the beginning. And then, like, they just took down the Cowboys. We heard, is there anything to that? I mean, it, it, it very well could be. But, you know, like I said about the Bills, the 49ers, I've been very lucky to be around a lot of those guys. Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, Fred Warner, uh, Will Compton. He played with, with Trent. Those guys kind of don't have – that ego where it's like we were them now our law you know they have one of the best locker rooms in the entire nfl as far as camaraderie and lifting people up <clears throat> i think it was you know excuse me <clears throat> got it i think it's one of those games so where <laughs> you know it's it's wet outside it's you know you can't really throw the ball a lot brock purdy he's the ball slipping out of his hand the whole time he's playing he didn't look very good you know debo goes down cmc goes down they don't they, here's the issue when you lose Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey, wh who do you go to? You can go to Ayuk, but George Kittle. Right. George Kittle is top two tight ends in the NFL, and he has one reception for one yard. You need to feed that man over and over again. He literally has the best on-field persona of anybody in the NFL, laughing, playing rock, paper, scissors with the, with the, with the camera, the yeah. sky cam. He's, he's got it, and he's got the juice, and he's got the vibe. Toss him the ball a couple of times. Let him get some yak. Crazy. Rip in there, and then guess what? Go hand the ball off three times. Hit a play action. Are you deep? Guess what, boys? We've done it. We've won the game. It was wild, but you can't take away from the Browns in the situation. You can't. And the whole, I think that the kicker makes it at the end. Then we're talking about what a brilliant drive Rock <laughs> really had at the end, despite all of the adversity that he faced. Um, you got your Pennywise. You got your Freddy Krueger. <laughs> you've got your E.T., your Chucky. And then you've got your Miles Garrett. You mentioned Trent Williams. Yeah. You don't want to pick a fight with this man. Did you see 
what he happened did. here? Miles was able uh, to just move Trent Williams. What what kind of love do you want to give Miles Garrett? What a terrifying man. No, I'm not giving I'm not giving Miles love. I got <laughs> I'm going to talk about why Let's this is it. an accident, okay? What? <clears throat> Trent gets a little overextended. He gets a little outside his outside shoulder. He jumps on there. He fought, he fell for the speed rush type of situation, and he just gets overextended. And Miles uses momentum against him. That being said, I will give Miles Garrett flowers. You want to talk about aliens? You want to talk about a quiet place? That is that he's, <laughs> he's the alien place. in the quiet place. He, the guy is built. Uh, like he's he the dude's just stacked, man. Like and the fact that he wears a little quarter the quarter sleeve on his shoulder. I if you, if I had arms like that, brother, I'm I'm not owning a shirt, K. I'm going to be in the winter time and it's going to be 15 degrees and I'm going to have tarps off just ripping around. The man's got it. Athletic ability. He can jump out of the gym. He, you know, his, his arms touch his damn knees. Like it's, he's got all the attributes. He's leading the league in sacks for a reason. He's an absolute stud. And I love, here's what I love. And I'm, I'm going to get a little, I'm going to give myself some flowers. His rookie year we played and there was a big back and forth. We were chirping the entire game, but he said, I got the best of them and I never played him since then. So miles, if you watch this brother, it's still one zero. I'm undefeated against you. You're undefeated. Yeah. Yeah. You, you certainly, he's just so scary. Cause then he like, didn't he do speaking of spooktober, like the whole grim reaper thing. And he yeah. had like the names he, of the quarterbacks that he set. Like he's yeah. so, that's so scary. What? That's it. That's another, he's another individual that first I love that he's embracing the spook like that. That is beautiful. But he's, his personality is so unique. It's such a unique and like guy loves dinosaurs and he likes watching like stuff like Dragon Ball Z and stuff like that. He's just, he's just into his stuff and he's confident and he believes in his craft and he knows that I can be whoever I want because I'm putting the product in the field. He just doesn't live by the stereotypes of, of certain guys. So yeah, Miles, unique cat, very unique cat, but he's he's doing it. I mean, he literally is. He is that defense. He is the number one pass defense in the league. Nobody wants to face them. Brock Purdy probably not feeling great this morning. Um, all of this, this whole conversation just made me feel bad for Trent Williams because we know he's a, just like leave the big dog alone, right? So, in the, so the game doesn't even start. And you're already getting into these squabbles and fights that you're not, you yeah. don't want none. Depots get like, it's like me when I'm at a bar. If I was at a bar with you, Taylor, and I, I would just be mm. the most reckless talk. I'd be, I would be <laughs> shoving people. I'd be talking smack. Yeah. I would just, just because I have you, you're there. Like I, Taylor's yeah. got me. And that's, have you ever been roped into a situation like that? Where like. In football or like, are we talking well, bar scenes? No, like a, we're on the field, like a chihuahua, like you're saying, a DB or whatever it is. is oh, like, yeah. We can, like, I mean, you we can my jump back. back. Look, yeah, we can look back at Josh Allen. We can look back. And I, I Josh is hilarious. And Will, Will uh, Compton, he played with Josh and says he's the greatest guy. This is like, this, Josh here? was, he, he, he was being nasty. We're, we're in a four minute. And we run to the left, Derrick Henry. It's a smart play, smart call. And we get about four or five yards. And then Josh Norman kind of gator rolls Derrick's leg on it. And I'm like, that's, to me, like, as an offensive lineman, your pride is your quarterback and your running back. And that, and to see that, and Derrick's my boy, dude. I love Derrick. To see that happen pissed me off. So after the game, I go over, I see him, I give him his patented little arrow. And he gets all mad, throws his helmet at me, completely misses, by the way. And then gets in my face the way he does. And, you know, I had a, I actually had a uh, interview after this saying, "Hey, it's not our fault. You're irrelevant now." Ball, 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 all of this. So I, I got the upper hand there. Now, this is where Josh gets me back. The next season, oh God, I I get suspended for a, a PED, and it's like, you know, did he? Did he not? Hey, fifty percent of you watching are saying I did, and fifty percent say I didn't. I did it. I promise. However, there was a, a guy who has a company, a clothing company in Nashville, Tennessee, that makes T-shirts and said Taylor Lewan is my dad, and he found Josh Norman's. Oh my God. Uh, address and he sends him the t-shirt well when the ped thing came out josh norman got a piss cup and he sent it back to the same address as a chirp to me for failing for a ped and so that is like it happened to me so that sucks but the chirp itself is so incredible (laughs) it's so it's so funny so good for him on that so what happens if you see him now like what, what 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 are the rules of engagement Rules, are, yeah. The rules of engagement for me is this: K. Okay, I'm 32 years old. I have two daughters that are six and three years old. I'm married. I got an incredible life. I do a show with my best Great friend. Hair. <laughs> I, I got phenomenal hair and a decent mustache. I'm not going to jail for nobody, K. Okay? You want to come on, <laughs> talk all. You talk all your smack all you want. I shake your hand, give you a little pat on top of the head. We'll move on, brother. It's one of those deals for me. There okay. are very few people, very few people in this world that I think I would strike. There's only one. 
football player that I think I'd have a hard time Ooh. not having Ooh. confrontation Ooh. with. You still have to tune in to up no, and out of who? next week. Who, who, who? No, no. The only individual that I have like in my mind still a quarrel with is uh, Andre Branch. After I signed my contract, I came out in the uh, I came out in the Boss Hog outfit, and then we threw an interception. It was the longest game in NFL history. We were playing Miami down in Miami, and there was like four right, like storm delays, and we throw an interception. And I'm I at this time in my career, I am all about hawking down an interception. I'm that's like my thing. So I'm like about it and I'm looking and as I'm going, Andre Branch, boom, binks me right in the chin. There's a whole YouTube video on it. You guys should watch it. I'm I'm looking it up right now. Yeah. I'm like slept on the ground and then I jolt back up and I see everybody fighting and you know, I I don't know what's happening. Everyone's like, Hey, you got knocked out. You got knocked out. And then Andre Branch goes on the sideline and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull it up. They're efforting. And he, yeah, he's got, he's on the sideline. He's, he's yelling like body bag, body bag. And to me, it's like pretty scummy. Pretty. That's a. We'll, we'll go and categorize that in the scummy category. I've done some scummy things myself on the football field, so I can't throw too much shade. But that is the one thing I was like, I've gotten over it as the years have gone. But that's one clearly of those not. Like, clearly, have not. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have not, I don't know if you've done enough inner work on that one for you to sort of yeah. let that one go. There. This is a. I've never thought we'd, we'd get here. This is a good question to ask NFL, NFL players, former and current. Who is the one person you'd do some time for? Like that's a great time. Yeah. Who's the Who's the guy yeah. at the top of your power rankings for I'd go to jail for for you for catching yeah, me I guess, outside? I, I guess that would be. It would have to be him. It would have to be Andre Branch. But you know what? If you look at the way life's life's you know, handled itself, you know, three Pro Bowls and all pro and you know, nine years in the same team. Andre Branch might have been a backup his entire career. So as far as like W's and L's, I'm going to put myself in the category of the W Let's there. Let's get ourselves into a better place here. Better vibes all around here. On yes, this thank God. Because I was getting nasty. I was no, getting nasty. I think it's hilarious. You're ridiculous. I love it. We're loving it. I, I do want you to know that I hung out with um, someone who we mutually both love and have a lot of affection for to bring the vibes to a positive place, Delaney Walker. I was in London. He came and he sat with me. I could not love him more. He's always been the personification of like what you should be on the field, off the field. He's incredible. And he, I know, is um, your partner. Um, and uh, I, I don't have, let me see. But we, I think we have a question. It slips uh, and picks uh, 500. Yeah, called, that's right. Uh, we don't have it, but I do have it. And that's your podcast, uh, With Bustin' and With The Boys. And it's you and him and Will. And he was rocking a Limp Bizkit shirt. And he had a question for you, my friend. Take a listen. Taylor, what's the percentage of the mule? And who's in first place, baby? I don't know what that means. It's some code. I hope it was appropriate, but oh, I know no, that. I know, Delaney. <laughs> Delaney, you're like the best guy on the total planet. What that is so funny. So yeah, so Slips and Picks is our NFL gambling show, and it's kind of run like a stock market type of deal where we evaluate teams as uh, stocks every single week. And there's uh, myself. I play a character named Chet Savage. There's Will Compton, who plays Willie Gecko, <clears throat> And then there's uh, there's... Delaney, who plays Theodore Mule Jenkins, and uh, he goes by the Mule. He gets units, units, units. That's his whole. That's his whole bit. I did not expect Delaney to do so well. Two weeks ago, he went eleven and two in his bets. Whoa. Though this past week, he went like ten and four in his bets, and then I think he's up again this week. Like literally, the Mule is truly making units. It is. It's. It's amazing to see. And the the thing too. Here's my thing. Favorite thing about Delaney is he does not. Like people all say the time try to be cool. I don't care what people think. Delaney really doesn't care what you think about him. He he's gonna act the way he does, he's gonna say the things, and the way he says it with that pearly white smile and a laugh behind every some sort of shot, it's just like, yeah, all right, go ahead, bub. You got it. And he's dude, Delaney's <laughs> the absolute best. Anybody who gets a chance to work with Delaney Walker always walks away with a smile. He's the absolute best. We love that he just is doing that podcast with you. Hamilton, my uh, my producer, is saying, is the Mule Essential Missouri reference where Delaney went to college? That's their mascot, probably. I don't know. Yeah, uh, maybe. It maybe. might be. It might Who be. knows? We love it. Okay, I, I like, want to talk uh, to you it, about... If we do, the layers are beautiful. A couple more topics here. I didn't realize we were going to do it. Uh, talk about a defensive end who's on your wish list of going to jail. So let's talk about the Patriots. They they yeah. lose. I can't... Belichick lost to McDaniels. Like, that's crazy. I didn't think it happened. The Pats are one in five. So everybody's yep. talking about how Mac Jones is the issue. How do you view Bill Belichick and his, like, in a pie chart of responsibility? How big is his slice? He's in charge of this team. He's in charge of the talent that signs to this team. He's thrown tablets on the sidelines. Yeah. Thank God for the surface, right? That Those durable, reliable durable. little tablets Ooh. probably made it through that. Um Here's what I'll say about Bill Belichick. If you go into Boston, it's going to be the most passionate fan bases across the board in all the main sporting events. 
I was in Boston for the Barstool Awards show back in August. And when I was there, there was a, we went to a bar after there was a bunch of Pats fans. And I go, hey, what's the deal with Billy? Like, is he is he dead to you guys? Like, what's the deal? And literally, this is this is how Pats fans, for the most part, from the okay. sample size that I had, view Bill Belichick. He can stay as long as he wants. He earned it. You don't have to worry about it. He's going to get him right. Give him as many years as he needs. He's totally fine. That's how people, that's how much respect that man has. And one of the most brutal fan bases of all time, mm-hmm. like Boston sports, like it's close up there with Philly. Now, is he uh, massively responsible for the downfall of this team right now? No question. Is Bill O'Brien with the play calling? I would say so as well. I'm not a huge fan of Billy B, but you know, Mac Jones, that's it's a tough. He the, the boy's having a hard time. He he's having a, a tough one, and he was being assaulted all day by Max Crosby, who is commonly known as a Commodore, who got the safety at the end of the game. They just, you know, it's just crazy to see. I think, I think we might be in a tank situation. I don't think Oof. any NFL team ever ever looks at a tank like goes, oh, we're gonna tank. That's like all for us fans to sit there and say. But I will, I will say like, hey, if you're the Pats. That Caleb Williams kid in the USC looks pretty good. If not, hey, listen, J.J. McCarthy's a stud, too. You might want to get him as well. I don't know. It's hard because what does I Belichick do think, want? Um, like, Belichick has to prove something, obviously. He thinks he does. Maybe a lot of people yeah. say he doesn't have anything to prove, but he wants that Shula record, right? And that's what he – so to see – tanking yeah. for him, he's got wins, he's got a stack, and it doesn't look like he's going to do it, and that's crazy. And, like, is that what he's waiting for? Is that what he's doing? I, I don't know, but I'll ask you this. I just you, – what, what's what, – why aren't you a Billy O.B. fan? Oh, Billy B, he was at Penn State when I was at Michigan. And uh, I'm not, I'm, it's not that I'm not a fan of him. No, you said When that. he was at Houston. <laughs> yeah, 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 I did, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when, he was at, when he was at Houston and then guys would come from Houston, Tennessee, they would tell me the things that Bill said about me and stuff like that. And so, you know, whenever we played them and we were up, I would be, you know, tripping him on the sidelines and, and just saying demonstrative things. And you, it, it's like one of those deals, like, do I not like him? No, it's not that I don't like him. I just, it's like, it's like a rivalry thing to me in my own like delusional brain of playing football that I'm like, yeah, Bill O'Brien, he's against me, so I'm against him type thing. Well, you're thing. my so, boy, so I'm you know. against him. What kind of stuff was he saying about you? You know, you know, you, know, you don't want to really get into it too much, Kay, but I you know, do. he was, of course he, was I do. he was saying some things. He was saying, um, hothead, this kid. guy, if you get under his skin, he'll get a bunch of penalties. Uh, this dude, he's, uh, he was using mean words. Uh, talking about the female reproductive uh, oh. system and then referring it to me, those types of things. But you know what? It, to me, all's fair is for, when chirping goes on in football. I, I, I think it's all – everything's fair game when it comes to the chirp. So if that's how he's going to get the boys riled up, get the boys riled up. Yeah, as long as you're not, uh, you know, that branch guy. <laughs> as, long, <laughs> as long as you're not him. Okay, I have one more for you, and then i got to get your Monday night's uh, prediction here. So the Ravens, we, we were there. We were at the gate. We were in London. So they, they got there a couple of days before your Titans. I talked to Chris Johnson. I talked to Delaney. Both of them were tired AF coming off that plane when the Titans – it was it – was, whatever. Titans looked a little sluggish in that first half. Tannehill leaves mm-hmm. with the ankle injury. They've lost two straight now. Even Vrabel didn't seem like super optimistic. Did you hear Vrabel after the game? Take a listen. I did. Frustrated with the repetition? Uh, or are some things losing, frustrated with losing. Some things unable to be corrected given Probably. what you have? Maybe. We'll see. But not going to stop trying. Not going to stop trying to prepare them and, and teach them and fundamentals and execution. What do you think? I think we have to pull layers back on this. The individual who asked Mike Vrabel that question is like the perennial like uh, villain of Nashville medium. I'm not going to say his name because we don't want to give him flowers on this show because um, it's not worth it. But that guy, he, he usually asks the questions that it's like, hey, did you really need to ask it that way? Like, why are you coming at the players so much? He has uh, tweets about players that are like, this is unforgivable, thin type stuff. So I think that that answer from Vrabel is, is uh, multifaceted. I think one of it is being annoyed with the individual that's asking the questions. Mm-hmm. And two, you just finished a game. I'm sure he's tired as well. And uh, things aren't looking good in Tennessee. Things aren't going the way that people – you know, expected to go, wanted to go. Uh, some people are, you know, are saying things about Mike Vrabel's job. Here's what I'll say about Mike Vrabel. As far as understanding the game and getting players to understand the process of what you want to achieve during the game to beat the other the other team and knowing the rules and using them to their advantage, 
I'm not so sure that there's a better coach in the NFL than Mike Vrabel. He is, hmm. he's the guy, he's going to do it. There's been a big changing of the guard. I'm not there anymore. Ben Jones isn't there anymore. Uh, you know, Cunningham is gone. AJ Brown left a couple of years ago. Uh, it's just, it's, there's a bunch of new guys in place that are just having a tough time gelling right now. And I think the defense is playing well, but the offense has got to start playing better because if they don't, it's going to wear more on the defense. They're going to have to play. They're playing much more snaps than the offenses on a game to game basis. They're wearing Jeffrey Simmons in the middle of that team uh, in the middle of that defense is, you know, he's a godsend to that, to that team. He does an amazing job of, you know, shedding blocks and, and being vocal and being, and being mm-hmm. a good leader on that team. So they've got tools. How, how high their ceiling is, I don't know. But I will tell you this, Kay. Tell the me. last time the Titans were 2-4, it was 2019, and everybody was calling for our heads. We were presumed dead. The Tennessee Titans were dead on the floor. We were done. And what did we do? We went to the AFC Championship. And we almost beat the Kansas City Chiefs to go to the Super Bowl. So no matter how dead you might think these boys are, they are not dead. And we will keep riding with the Titans all year long. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. I love it. All right, listen to Bustin' with the doing. Boys. Uh, Delaney Walker, got to listen to your other podcast. You were doing a million things. I got to get your, your prediction for tonight quick. Dallas Cowboys at Chargers. Chargers coming off a bye. They're playing it so far. Are we going? We should go to that game. What, what do you got? I got Cowboys minus two, and they're going to take the over as well in that game. It's going to be a nice little score like thon back and forth, but I think the Cowboys take that thing. Look at that loyalty you've got to your Cowboys. Ride or die with them and the Titans. All right, we love you. You're the best. Have a spooky Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, and we'll talk to you next week. Guys, what a time. What, what a an time. absolute time. Thank you so much. You're the best. Thank you for all the time. We went way over with Taylor Lewan, but we love hearing his insights, and I love when things go crazy. And so we'll be back after this. I didn't think we were going to talk about Josh Norman today, but here we are. Okay, so we're doing Attaboy's here in the Seas. Okay. Yeah, he was good. He was great. He was great. He was great. He was great. Um, all that stuff. I mean, him on, him on Bill O'Brien is hilarious. Story time with Taylor um, Him calling Debo a chihuahua is hilarious. <laughs> and then him, tra- then him taking it back and saying, no, the DBs. Because they don't want to say it about Debo. That was hilarious. Um... The thing about the Titans was great. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty much said Jets will be a playoff team, right? They can do. I know it. I should have pressed him on that. They can. What did you say? They can get to a spot yeah. where they could be a playoff team. Well, he especially t- if I just remember. he spoke super positively about the defense. Yeah. On our show. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to pre-or producing get him there, but I should have pressed him on. Are they a playoff team? You're not feeling me. You're just mu- you're mumbling. <laughs> He's like, oh, what are you saying? <laughs> He's in my, and I'm like, what are you He's been like, super chill all day. He's been <laughs> this <laughs> very. <laughs> I'm like, what are you, speak up! <laughs> fine cool sounds great we love that for us Aaron Rodgers broke his collarbone with the Packers yeah I think it was like week three I don't, I don't want to talk tough in a bar Tony but I do I definitely if you're with somebody who can fight who's big or is connected like you just you, it, you feel a little, a little bit you feel a little more like if you know the bar owner you feel yeah, a little my mouth's going a little bit you're just you, it, you, it's, you, you gotta. just feel like you got a lead blocker you know you got somebody who's gonna take care of business and i think that's probably how i would feel if i was with trent williams i mean him, any him and trent place. walk out together every week yeah like bodyguard and debo with the boom we box. should ask him about that then yeah tomorrow mm-hmm. yeah just like what's what what's in that what's what's that relationship made of yeah i like that a lot they gotta be besties talk to us about trent williams he's so scared is there any way scarier who's scarier nobody 
now to hand out some Edda Boys, Edda Babies. This is the time of the show where we give out some love, which is what the world needs, of course. And this is for performances in week six, which is still going on with the Cowboys and the Chargers tonight at SoFi. But first up, how about Vikings linebacker Jordan Hicks? Without Justin Jefferson, Minnesota's offense, they couldn't get nothing going in Chicago. So Hicks was like, yo, I'm going to do this myself. Scoop and score. He adds 10 tackles and an interception of Justin Fields to lead the Vikings. I had a dream about Justin Fields the other night. Weird. 19-13 win over the Bears. I did. And hey, Deshaun Jackson, what'd you make of this play? This was, what'd you think? That a boy, that a boy. That a boy? That a boy. Yeah! Do you know the Warrior Princess? Why not? Uh, they have a showdown with the banged up Niners on the horizon on Monday night. Did anybody watch Zena the Warrior Princess? <laughs> I sound like I sound like, I sound like Shakira instead. <laughs> anyway, she had bangs, and it was supposed to be like 2030 BC. Like, who had who had that haircut, Zena? Weird. Okay, I also have to hand out. Um, <laughs> I just put that together. She literally had like a look her up, beautiful woman, but she had bangs, and I'm like, who's cutting who's cutting bangs back in whatever Roman Empire? No, this is not. This is this was. God is God. This was Athena time. This was Hades. This was kicking it back uh, with the uh, Greek mythology. No, she had straight up bangs, like perfectly manicured bangs. Okay, I, yeah, crazy. I also have to hand out um, as a couple attaboys here to some former Patriots who played a key role in the Raiders' 21-17 win over New England. And this was supposed to be Jimmy Garoppolo's big revenge game. Let me take down Belichick. He left with an injury. Womp, womp, womp. Um, yeah, they, he got the big, you know biggest lead, blah, 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 blah. How about Jacoby Myers? Let's take a look. And Chris Hogan, this is your former teammate. What do you make of Jacoby Myers' revenge game? Atta boy. Atta baby. Then Jimmy G is out. Uh, the other former Patriots quarterback, Brian Hoyer, the destroyer. He sounds like somebody who'd be kicking it with Xena, the Warrior Princess. He steps in to finish the job, going six for 10 for 102 down the stretch. Listen, we had Jermaine, we had J Jacob, we had uh, my oh, good friend Brad, Brandon Boland uh, smashed. Uh, I used to live down the street from New England. That's a long story. They all chipped in to beat their former team. That had to suck for Bill Belichick and company. The Raiders now somehow back to 500. They're sitting there at 3-3. Three and three. Atta, baby. And finally, got to talk about the commander's edge rusher, Casey Tuhill. okay? If that name isn't, like, super familiar to you, it's because it shouldn't be. He spent most of his career buried on the depth chart for the star set of commander's front, right? Then he gets a chance to shine Sunday. Why? Because Montez Sweat left with a thumb injury. This dude has two career sacks coming into this year. He racked up two... Mega sacks on Desmond Ritter. Atta, baby! The game was on the line. I mean, Matt Forte, how about this guy? Atta, boy. Atta, baby. That's how you do it. That's how you do it! Two Hill? Two Hill? I need the Two Hill jersey. He helps the commanders escape Atlanta with the win. Even after the offense went totally stagnant in the fourth quarter, the defense as a whole deserves an Atta, boy! Atta, baby! I mean, they bounce back. Nightmare against the bear situation. The commanders are back at three and three. Okay. They remain in the mix with those playoff hopefuls in the NFC. All right, we're gonna take a break here. Xena the Warrior Princess. I mean, who has bangs like this? Look at the woman in the back of her has bangs too. This was the haircut back in the day. Give me a break. I just put that together. Why does she have that haircut? I don't know, but that's Why was major. that? Who decide was like, this was it? What, the writer's room, what are you like, doing? It's literally like 2005 Zoe yeah. Deschanel in New Girl. Totally that's new. the haircut that we're gonna give to this woman who's, she had those like, a boomerang things? Yeah. They were like circular boomerangs. Circular boomerangs? They were like, uh, <laughs> and she would go, yeah! <laughs> and she would have these crazy calls of, it was wild. I'm looking this up. <laughs> okay, 17 seconds left. <laughs> Zena talk. Oh, the shock room? Hamilton. What do you got? What I do love you got? how, uh, because Zena Warrior Princess cost us a chance to give uh, the 5 and 1 Lions some love today on the show. You know what? I'll, I think the Lions get enough love about right. everywhere. Right. The Lions are getting love from all corners of our great sports media w landscape. I think they can survive. Fair. Put it. <laughs> Who did Campbell give hey, but the, of all uh, the of all the things in that show, of all the crazy shit that went on in that show, it's what? the bangs that you're really hung up on. I thought I'm hung up on. I just think <laughs> I didn't see. Marissa gets it. <laughs> what would you love? 
<laughs> oh, Mr. 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 NFL Media, uh, born and bred, wants Cowboys talk to wrap the show. Or bang talk. I don't want, bang I don't talk. want to talk about bang, bang talk. talk. First of all, bang gate over here. Look at Eric. You think that would What's fly in the world oh. of Dante's Inferno and Hades and no all shot. that stuff? No shot. <laughs> no shot. No shot. What if we saw a picture like this in the textbook? Hercules. Um, Hercules. Kevin Sorbo was Wasn't in Hercules, Hercules, but that, that yeah. haircut kind of fit. Um, you should look like cousin, like that. I look like Cousin Nick a little bit. You know, <laughs> Spooktober. Fall out boy. There you go. I mean, it was Taylor Lewan's hair was also a big part of our show today. Wait, great hair day from Taylor. I don't know how we did that. I mean, that. the volume. He has oh. so much hair. I know. I know. The curls were curling. He was terrifying with Josh Norman. I'm glad you remembered that clip. I don't even remember that clip. I love beef. Old Marissa's like, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> clip that off. Uh, <laughs> you were, yeah, all over it. <laughs> Although I didn't want to play that then. I wanted to talk more. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay, we're, pull that up. Can I have that? Okay, get Hamilton. <laughs> get Hamilton. Hamilton has 17 seconds to defend his The Lions do deserve the love. <laughs> Lions defense, you are the real deal. We love you. I saw Jared Goff got the game ball from Dan Campbell. All great things. And without Montgomery, Gibbs, I don't know how they did that. All right, you guys are all over the chat here. Cowboys visiting. SoFi to take on the Chargers. Hamilton, an interesting comment here. Ernie says that you want to talk about how Brandon Cooks is the huge addition to the Cowboys offense. I mean, listen, uh, I did expect this offense to not quite be this disgusting under Mike McCarthy. I think we all underestimated how much he was going to sandbag things, and now he gets to face Kellen Moore, who Ooh, he let go and maybe he shouldn't have tonight. So that's going to be interesting to watch. Busy. Hey, how about those Braves not making, not making it far in the playoffs? <laughs> Pew pew! I dug that was, that was up, wild, I dug up Bryce. the comment and I re quote quote tweeted it in a sleep coma. And I said, huh, I got so much grief for not picking the Braves uh, in the thing. Really but of course, did. the Dodgers, what are the Kershaw didn't show up again? What is that? Weird. Anyway, we just hit a lot of different topics. Who you got tonight? Cowboys, Chargers. I'm going to go Chargers. I think uh, the, char the Chargers are going to keep this thing going, too. Um, they've, been, they've been playing a They've been playing a lot better lately. You're right. They're coming off that bye, and I think I think we see Justin Herbert get some things going against this defense. We'll see. we got to give C.J. Stroud some love. We're going to give the Lions some love tomorrow. We're going to have, hopefully, Debo and Daniel Jones, and we're, we're praying for them uh, and their injuries. We're praying for everybody out there. We will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.